With special thanks to Drac Keegan VA as the voice of Starlight Glimmer, and for the first time on my channel, Goken San as the voice of Sunburst. Hey folks, Starlight Glimmer here. Along with her close friend, Sunburst. So, Diamondo has finally decided to do the review of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Not only is this his 250th review, but also his 10th anniversary review. So let's have him talk about what the future of his movie reviews will be about. Back in 2014, when I wrapped up with the recap of Twilight's Kingdom, I wanted to do something to hold you all over before the recaps of My Little Pony Season 5, along with the recap of Equestria Girls Rainbow Rocks. And so I did movie reviews related to films that I would see, starting with the review of Godzilla 2014. And oh boy, did it take up my time or what? To be honest, I never thought movie reviews would be so integrated into my YouTube channel. I covered a ton of properties outside of My Little Pony. Godzilla, Marvel Comics, DC Comics, The Hobbits, Looney Tunes, Disney movies, Pixar movies, Mortal Kombat, The Matrix, The Transformers, Beavis and Butthead, and Dragon Ball to name a few. Ironically, My Little Pony wound up being my 100th movie review back in 2017. What a way to go! But that being said, starting with review 251, I'll be focusing less on live action reviews and more on animated reviews, be it movies or TV shows. The reason? I have a sweet spot for animation and it's something I want to promote more of. It won't just apply to current animations coming out, but also animations of the past that we may have missed out on, or animation we enjoyed during the old days. That even includes re-reviews of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, and other projects coming out. But no matter what, I'll try to keep the review train going. Sure I'll have games I want to stream, and source filmmaker projects I want to do, and not to mention the return of My Little Pony recaps. But as long as there is something I want to review, I will do what I can to offer my thoughts on the film I review. One day, I will step away from reviews for good. But at least I was able to give my thoughts on what's coming out and on hidden treasures we may have missed. And that, I promise you all, the most. I hope you enjoyed that message. Anyway, enjoy the review of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And stay tuned for future movie reviews. Later! behind the world ahead and there are many paths to tread through shadow to the edge of night until the stars are all alight Mist and shadow, cloud and shade, hope shall fade, Author's Note This video is my review of the Lord of the Rings trilogy based off the extended editions, The Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, and The Return of the King. Based on The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien, directed by Peter Jackson, published by New Line Cinema and Wingnut Films. Starring Elijah Wood, Viggo Mortensen, Sean Bean, Dominic Monaghan, Sean Ashton, Ian McKellen, Jean Reyes Davies, Orlando Bloom, Billy Boyd, 
Kate Blanchett, Hugo Weaving, Liv Tyler, Christopher Lee, and Sir Ian Holm as Bilbo Baggins, featuring Andy Serkis as Gollum slash Smeagol. All three films are rated PG-13. This review is dedicated to the memory of Sir Ian Holm, the elder Bilbo Baggins on the Lord of the Rings trilogy and the Hobbit trilogy. Merle, precious. Together, my Lord Sauron, we shall rule this middle earth. And what about very old friends? Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come for our review of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. It's been 10 years since I first started doing movie reviews back in 2014, and unlike with the Hobbit trilogy, there will be no re-reviews. We're going over one of the biggest film events of all time, even compared to other films like Star Wars, The Avengers, and The Godfather. We shall have peace when you answer for the burning of the Westfold. Much like my re-review of the Hobbit trilogy, I will be reviewing all three films in one shot. That's right, we're not doing these separately. We're going to cover as much as we can through all three films. And I am just as excited to get down and dirty with this. From familiar faces like Legolas, Saruman, Gollum, Bilbo, and Gandalf, to all new characters like Frodo, Aragorn, Gimli, and Samwise. This is, without a doubt, the pinnacle of my movie reviews. Mary Adolk Brandybuck and Peregrine Took. I might have known. That being said, I also have to say this. Film itself, like animation, is an art that we shouldn't take for granted. And in this day and age, we're seeing certain people do just that for simply a tax write-off. There are some films I want to see come out just to judge for myself and just letting them rot away without even a single screening is an injustice towards the art itself. Who cares if the film is good or bad? Even seeing it is better than keeping it stashed away for life. You shall not pass! But I digress. The time has come for the review of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, the Fellowship of the Ring, the Two Towers, and the Return of the King. Enjoy, because I don't know if I'll ever do a review of this caliber again. Many decades have passed since the events of the Hobbit trilogy, since the tale of Bilbo Baggins, his journey with Thorm Oakenshield and his dwarven companions, his fight against Smaug the Dragon, and the battle of the five armies within the land of Erebor. And now, an old evil is rearing its ugly head into Middle-earth once more. It is precious to me. Sauron, the Dark Lord, has emerged to conquer Middle-earth from the dark lands of Mordor, with an ever-expanding army of orcs and humans who wish to end the era of man and create a new world of darkness, and even more so, the ring that Bilbo Baggins acquired from Gollum during his journey as a burglar has begun to take his mind and corrupt him. I suppose you think that was terribly clever. Come on, Gandalf. Known as the One Ring to rule all, Gandalf decrees that the ring must be destroyed in the fires of Mordor. The nephew of Bilbo Baggins, Frodo Baggins, must embark on a journey to Mordor to destroy the ring and the source of Sauron's power. But another man, 
a ranger of the north named Aragorn, will undergo his own journey to become the king who would lead mankind's future. If you have not watched the Hobbit trilogy, then allow me to explain. The whole of Middle-earth is just breathtaking. From the simple land of the Shire where the Hobbits make their home, to the elven sanctuary of Rivendell, to the horrifying catacombs of the ruins of Moira, and the forsaken wetlands of the Dead Marshes to name a few. The land of Middle-earth is full of enchanting wonders and terrifying horrors that bedazzle the imagination. You stink of horse. But there were two landscapes that showcased the pinnacle of Middle-earth, especially in the return of the king. The first was Minas Tirith, capital city of Gondor that was impressive in its design, carving into the side of the mountain, and it may have been the inspiration for Canterlot in My Little Pony. The other is the land of darkness where Sauron resides, Mordor. It is a land of fire, brimstone, and pure death. One that a hero shouldn't dwindle about, unless said hero wants to meet its demise. My master, Sauron the Great, bids thee welcome. But from the beginning to the very end, the tension was on full display. It wasn't just the hobbits that went through hell in this film, it was also the companions that journeyed with them to the ends of Mordor. Danger and war followed our heroes as they journeyed to both Gondor and Mordor, and sometimes it felt like hope was fading away for the heroes of Middle-earth. Even the most clumsy of fools, Merry and Pippin, would go through the hell of their life. If anything, the journey will change the life of any who walk down this path. The sad thing about Frodo Baggins is that unlike his uncle Bilbo, he really didn't want to go on an adventure. All he wanted to do was enjoy life in the Shire, in the land of the Hobbits. He's not as cunning as his uncle, nor is he as skilled in combat. But what makes me like Frodo was that he was more of a down-to-middle-earth Hobbit, just a guy who wanted to enjoy life as he saw it, be it by himself, with uncle Bilbo, or with his close friends, a Hobbit with a real heart. Ring is mine. That being said, his journey took a horrible toll on him. He was hunted down by orcs in the Nazgul, and worst off, the one ring that he safeguarded was corrupting his mind, breaking him in many ways than one. It felt real sad to see Frodo go from a pure-hearted hobbit into a tragic monster obsessed with power, obsessed with the one ring. I mean, he wanted to enjoy life in the Shire not go out into the world and put his life in danger, all just to destroy that one ring of power. It could break anyone without a doubt. I thought maybe if we was having a roast chicken one night or something. Roast chicken? Frodo had a number of companions at the beginning of his journey, but it all boiled down to the one who stuck by him to the very end, Samwise Gamgee. While he did make a promise to Gandalf to look after the hobbits, what makes Samwise live up to his task was how he dedicated himself to protecting Frodo, going from a simple gardener in the Shire to a warrior carved by the sword, even going as far as to fight the monstrous spider known as Shelob. And despite his own flaws, like how reckless and hot-headed he can be, Samwise proved to be worthy of that first name, without a doubt. Master's my friend. You don't have any friends. Originally a minor character in The Hobbit, Gollum took center stage in Frodo Baggins' journey. Once he was a hobbit named Smeagol, until his mind was corrupted by the One Ring 500 years ago. Since Bilbo Baggins took his ring, his precious, he desires to get it back by any means necessary. Addicted by the aura of the Ring of Power, he's far more of a tragic figure whose mind was fractured because he desired the ring's power, going completely savage over his obsession. There are times where I felt really sorry for Gollum, because of this, even to the end of his story. <laughs> the 
Now, while the story of Frodo Baggins is a tragic tale of a hobbit who was nearly corrupted by the One Ring, I prefer the tale of Aragorn and his companions in their fight against the Orcs of Mordor, especially when Frodo and Samwise split from them. To me, Aragorn felt like a ranger who can carry his own weight in his own journey, lead warriors in their fight against Sauron's army, even going as far as to lead the undead and gain their respect. And that's a lot he deserves, because Aragorn represents the hope and determination in man's struggles against evil incarnate. I thought I'd die fighting side by side with an elf. What about side by side with a friend? Alongside Aragorn, there are always two companions that stick by the future king of man. The dwarf Gimli, son of Gloin who accompanied Thorin, and Legolas, Prince of Mirkwood who we saw in the Hobbit trilogy. But what I love about Gimli and Legolas is their love-hate relationship, just seeing them take jabs at each other while being the best allies on the battlefield. If you ask me, these two provided both awesome and funny moments that make them stand out in Aragorn's party and of all of the trilogy. Though I wish there were more dwarves in this trilogy. Besides, one dwarf isn't enough. Well, maybe more than two, but you get the picture. Dark have been my dreams of late. While there were a lot of side characters that made up the trilogy, one stood out to me on top. Theoden, King of Rohan. He started off as a broken man, a shell of his former self reflecting on his failures, including the death of his son Theodred. But as he broke free from his emotional shackles, Theoden began his own path of redemption, atoning for his own failures and rallying his people to fight back against Sauron's armies. Of all the secondary characters of this trilogy, Theoden stands out as one of the best, and the ending of his own story is both bitter and sweet. You think you are wise, Mithrandir. Yet for all your subtleties, you have not wisdom. On the flip side, there is one character that really wrote me the wrong way. Denethor, the steward of Gondor. He was too prideful and greedy, treating the throne of Gondor like it was his own. He favored his elder son Boromir while he treated his youngest son Faramir like garbage. And as his story went on, he became far more spiteful and vile, like he could generate far more hate than even the likes of Sauron. The only time I did feel sorry for him was when he nearly lost Faramir and how far he truly fell. But other than that, Denethor was, without a doubt, the most despicable character in the trilogy. Of course, what's a good epic adventure without the presence of evil villains? Now the one thing about Sauron is that he's now just an evil eye, far different than what he used to be long ago. He does not speak, and we barely see him except in the twisted land of Mordor. But what makes him stand out was how his presence is felt across nearly every part of Middle-earth, from the orcs and the Nazgul that hunt down the One Ring, to his own Agents of Doom carrying out his orders. For a villain that's reduced to an evil eye, Sauron's presence alone casts doom and gloom across Middle-earth. They will find the ring. And kill the one who carries it. But it's not just Sauron who casts a doom and gloom across Middle-earth. Saruman is just almost as despicable as his new master. But it's not just the crimes he committed that stand out, nor is it the army of orcs he raised to fight the men of Middle-earth but it's the performance of the late Christopher Lee that creates a horrifying, treacherous, and powerful white wizard that would make ordinary men quiver with fear. It's a shame his character arc was concluded in the early parts of The Return of the King, because I would have loved to see him go even further than what the trilogy gave us. You fool. No man. And yet there are also two forces that are guided by Sauron and Saruman. On the one hand, you have the familiar orcs who played an important role in the Hobbit trilogy. Horrifying and imposing, these monsters know nothing but war, 
glory and a lack of mercy, and their designs make them the worst nightmare of anyone who encounter them. On the other hand, you have the Nazgul. It's not just their ghostly designs that make them stand out, it's also their ability to corrupt. This stands true with the Witch King of Angmar, the deadliest of the Nazgul, who even put Gandalf in his own place. Overall, these ring wraiths are the most horrifying forces of the Dark Lord Sauron. But it is not this day! This day we fight! To be honest, I had a harder time trying to decide which of the three films stood out as the best. Though if you ask me, I did favor Return of the King a bit more than the previous two films, just because of the stakes that were at play. Furthermore, I did have a harder time deciding which of the two trilogies was the best, the Lord of the Rings trilogy or the Hobbit trilogy. Both have their strengths and weaknesses, and both are further expanded upon thanks to the extended editions, which added in new scenes to expand the world of Middle-earth. Regardless what path you take, getting the extended editions is highly recommended. I am Saruman. Rather Saruman as he should have been. On the other hand, like with the Hobbit trilogy, I preferred the idea of the Lord of the Rings trilogy being split up into smaller episodes, rather than three films. Enjoy the story one part at a time, rather than watching it all at once. When I bought the new Lord of the Rings Trilogy Blu-ray, I was a bit disappointed that the three movies were split into six parts. But looking back, I'd say six parts is still a bit much. Maybe what they should have done is split the series into 22 minute length episodes as a separate Blu-ray series, covering the events of all three films with the extended edition parts. And like I said with the Hobbit trilogy, it helps keep the freshness of the series in my mind. You shall be the Fellowship of the Ring. Right. Where are we going? It's hard to tell if this trilogy is better or worse than the Hobbit trilogy, but the Lord of the Rings trilogy, the Fellowship of the Ring, the Two Towers, and the Return of the King stood out as one of the finest moments of cinema history. It's a tale that pits good against evil and pushes the action of heroes to their very limits, nearly going as far as to break their minds. Regardless if you've seen the Hobbit trilogy or not, be sure to give the Lord of the Rings trilogy a try. And here's to the future of my movie reviews. Can't believe it's been 10 years since I first reviewed Godzilla 2014. Oh boy. Greatest adventure is what